back to the optics and modern physics course we are discussing electromagnetic theory in our previous uh, lectures we have discussed maxwell's equations and in this uh, video we will discuss electromagnetic wave nature of light by using maxwell's equation so objectives of the lesson we have already seen uh, we have seen the Maxwell's equation uh, and in this lecture we will uh, see the propagation of electromagnetic wave. Uh, in next lecture we will discuss the boundary conditions and pointing theorem and the objectives of this particular lecture is to obtain velocity of electromagnetic wave in free space with the help of again Maxwell's equations in free space and uh, we will also discuss the propagation of electromagnetic wave in free space. So, we all know these are the Maxwell's equations in free space, we have discussed it in last video. Uh, so, as it is free space rho is equal to 0, so del dot E is equal to 0, del dot H is equal to 0, del cross E is equal to minus mu naught dou H by dou T and del cross H is equal to epsilon naught dou E by dou T because J is also equal to 0. So, we have this four Maxwell's equation. Uh, if we take curl of Maxwell's third equation that is del cross E. So, if we take the curl then it is del cross del cross E that is equal to we have to take curl on both sides of the equation. So, it is equal to minus mu naught dou by dou T curl of H. So, when we solve this particular left hand side first, del cross del cross E curl of a curl, we have vector identity and then using that identity we can write it is equal to gradient of divergence of E that is del into del dot E minus divergence of gradient of E that is del dot del into E. But uh, if we see Maxwell's first equation del dot E is equal to 0 and hence this del cross del cross E we get as my, uh, del dot de, uh, del into E that is minus of del square E. If we put this minus of del square E into this above equation, our equation becomes minus del square E, it is equal to uh, right hand side we have not solved it. So, it will remain as uh, it, it has remained as it is minus mu naught dou by dou t of del cross h. So, when uh, we put uh, del cross h from Maxwell's fourth equation. Uh, so, herein you can see this fourth equation del cross h is equal to epsilon naught dou e by dou t. So, if we put the that particular uh, value for del cross h our equation becomes minus del square E equal to minus mu naught dou by dou t of for del cross H we have put uh, epsilon naught dou E by dou t. As epsilon naught is constant we can take it outside. So, it will become minus mu naught epsilon naught dou by dou t of dou E by dou t that is dou square E upon dou t square. Okay? So, we will write that equation as minus del square E minus mu naught epsilon naught del square E upon dou t uh, sorry dou square E upon dou t square equal to 0. When we take all these terms on the same side our equation becomes del square E minus mu naught epsilon naught dou square E by dou t square equal to 0. I hope you have understood this. Uh, so, as we have solved Maxwell's third equation, we can solve Maxwell's fourth equation that is del, del cross H. So, if we take curl of Maxwell's fourth equation and solve just like this, uh, we get another equation that is del square H minus mu naught epsilon naught dou square H upon dou t square that is equal to 0. So, we have got these two equations by taking curl of Maxwell's third and fourth so, here is a reflection spot for you. Comparing general wave equation, we know general wave equation is del square y minus 1 upon v square dou square y upon dou t square equal to 0 and the equations which we derived in our previous slides that is del square e minus mu naught epsilon naught dou square e by dou t square equal to 0 or del square h and so on. Uh, can you find the velocity of electromagnetic wave? You can pause the video, uh, think over it uh, and you will get the answer. So, we have this general wave equation and we have uh, this one equation which is derived in our previous slide. So, I hope uh, you have got your answer now. 
So the answer is V is equal to 1 upon square root of mu naught epsilon naught. How do you get this answer? So if we compare this particular equation, uh, two equations, we can uh, easily uh, get the answer that V square is equal to, um, sorry, V square must be equal to 1 upon mu naught into epsilon naught. So when we take it square root, it is equal to 1 upon square root of mu naught into epsilon naught. Now, if we put the values of uh, mu naught and epsilon naught, mu naught's value is uh, 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7 into uh, epsilon naught value is 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 12. So, if we solve this, the final answer that we get is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. So, this is the velocity of light that we get in vacuum and uh, nearly the same velocity in free space. So, we can say that the velocity of electromagnetic wave is same as that, the velo as that of the velocity of uh, light in free space. And hence, this is the one uh, point where uh, we say that light is also an electromagnetic wave. Okay, so we have now proved that velocity of electromagnetic wave and velocity of light is same, but we have not yet proved the nature of electromagnetic wave that we have discussed in the first uh, lecture itself that electric field and magnetic field perpendicular to each other. So, we have yet to prove that particular nature of electromagnetic wave. Herein, we have just proved that the velocities of both light, electromagnetic wave, they are same. So, light can be electromagnetic wave. Uh, so, let us now see the nature of this electromagnetic wave and how those electromagnetic wave propagate through the space. Um, so, now we have these two equations del square E minus mu naught epsilon naught dou square E by dou T square equal to 0 and another equation similar del square H minus mu naught epsilon naught dou square H upon dou T square equal to 0. We can write solutions of these two equations as for uh, e equation, we can write the solution as E is equal to E naught E raised to I K dot R minus omega T. Here remember K is propagation wave vector, R is displacement vector, uh, E naught of course it is amplitude and it is position dependent that, that means it has also component along x, y and z axis, R also has component along x, y and z axis and so on. Similarly, we can also write the solution for H as H is equal to H naught E raised to I k dot R minus omega t. Now, let us uh, let's again go back to the Maxwell's third equation that is del cross E equal to minus mu naught dou H by dou T. Now, we have equation for E and we have this particular equation del cross E is equal to something. So, we can find out del cross E by taking determinant like this. So, when we have to find out del cross E, we can solve uh, by taking the determinant as i, j, k, dou by dou x, dou by dou y, dou by dou z, which are component of del, e x, e y, e z, which are component of e along x, y and z directions respectively. When we solve this particular determinant, final answer that we get in the form of equation and that equation is i into k cross so, now if we solve the right hand side of the equation that, that is mu naught dou h by dou t, we have this h equation. Uh, so, if we find out its uh, differentiation with respect to t, then uh, we get this equation dou h by dou t equal to minus i omega h naught into e raised to factor will remain as it is and that is nothing but minus i omega h. So, if uh, we put these values of uh, del cross E and um, uh, dou H by dou T into this Maxwell's third equation, uh, I, I can get cancel out, cancelled out because uh, they are there on both sides. So, our equation will become K cross E equal to minus minus becomes plus and it is mu naught omega into H. Similarly, if we solve Maxwell's fourth equation that is del cross H is equal to epsilon naught dou E by dou T, then um, we get uh, the equation as K cross H equal to minus epsilon naught omega into E. So, if we see these equations, this first equation K cross E, uh, 
is equal to some h vector that means cross product of these two vectors results into third vector that means k is perpendicular to h e is also perpendicular to h propagation vector and magnetic field vector perpendicular to each other electric field vector and magnetic field they are also perpendicular to each other and from this latter equation uh, we uh, uh, we conclude that k is also perpendicular to e that means propagation vector is also perpendicular to e so we uh, get uh, the nature of electromagnetic wave as k e and h Th these three vectors they are mutually perpendicular to each other that means how do this how do this uh, electromagnetic wave propagate uh, through the free space uh, as uh, the electromagnetic wave or light wave propagates electric field magnetic field they are perpendicular to each other and they are propagating in third perpendicular direction and hence we say that ke and h they are mutually perpendicular to each other so here uh, we have seen how the light propagated through the uh, free space but when it encounters any medium then uh, we have to study the boundary conditions and before that uh, we have to see the nature of the material okay so we have uh, seen uh, our maxwell's equation in free space if we consider dielectric medium for dielectric medium we know that uh, there is no uh, permittivity of free space but we have to consider the absolute permittivity of the medium similarly absolute permeability of the medium and therefore maxwell's equations becomes del dot e equal to zero as we know there will be no free charges available del dot h equal to zero del cross e is equal to minus mu here we have to consider absolute permeability uh, dou h by dou t and del cross h equal to epsilon into dou e by dou t so if we take the curl of maxwell's third and fourth equation and solve further just like we have done for the previous uh, uh, section so uh, if we do that then we get equations as del square e minus mu into epsilon dou square e upon dou t square equal to 0 and del square h minus mu into epsilon dou square h upon dou t square equal to 0. So, if we compare it with the general wave equation, the velocity that we get is 1 upon square root of mu into epsilon instead of mu naught into epsilon naught. So, here mu and epsilon they are absolute permittivity and permeability. So, that also can be written in the form of relative permittivity and permeability and if we write uh, that uh, it is equal to 1 upon square root of mu naught mu r into epsilon naught epsilon r and we know that 1 upon square root of mu naught into epsilon naught is nothing but c. So, that is equal to c upon square root of mu r into epsilon r. Now, we know that refractive index is given by c upon v. So, if we put expression for v that we got uh, in above equation, uh, this 1 upon uh, this c and c gets cancelled out and uh, the refractive index expression becomes square root of mu r into epsilon r, where mu r as you know it is relative permeability and epsilon r it is the relative permittivity. If the medium is perfectly dielectric that, dielectric, that means it is non-magnetic dielectric medium mu r is equal to 1 and then the refractive index is given by square root of epsilon r. So, in this video we have discussed electromagnetic wave propagation through free space as well as we have also discussed through the dielectric medium. Uh, but when it uh, encounters a dielectric medium, uh, how it re get refracted into medium, how its intensity changes, uh, that all these things uh, that can be uh, discussed if we understand the boundary conditions. So, in our next video, we will discuss those boundary conditions. Thank you.